Hi guys, welcome back. Today we are going to learn about uh, Bluetooth and uh, today we will be uh, starting the Bluetooth uh, tutorials and uh, I will cover all the Bluetooth uh, but uh, we will uh, cover this in three steps. And this is the first step. In first step we are just going to learn the basics and uh, in the second step we are going to work on the programming and in, in the programming we will just learn uh, the basic structure and uh, after we have finished that we we know how the basic uh, programming works uh, with this uh, Bluetooth uh, then we will move to the advanced step the, which would be the step number three in step number three we are uh, going to learn uh, all the things of Bluetooth and everything uh, related to Bluetooth uh, in depth so first of all this is the first step so uh, this is a basic introduction and uh, I will uh, cover all the basics in this uh, and uh, this is just a beginner friendly introduction uh, so if you already know about the Bluetooth then you can skip this and uh, if you are a beginner you don't know how the Bluetooth communication works uh, and uh, what are the basics uh, then I would recommend you to watch this out so we will start uh, from the history so it was initially developed by uh, Dr. Job Hartson at Ericsson company in 1994 there was a growing demand for wireless communication and uh, since all the companies were making their own uh, protocols it was uh, really difficult uh, for the developers to learn all the protocol and uh, then uh, they have to implement their software uh, and all the stuff so uh, there was a standard that was needed uh, to implement so that uh, uh, the developers don't have to go through that again and again. So in 1998, five big companies, namely Ericsson, Nokia, IBM, Intel and Toshiba, created a group uh, named uh, SIG, which was a special interest group. And uh, they uh, created a standard for communication among mobile devices because uh, at that time the mobiles were inter uh, were coming in the market and uh, there was a need for the wireless communication for data transmission uh, from mobiles to other devices and other devices to mobiles at that time there was a need of a standard so bluetooth is basically a standard of uh, wireless communication and uh, it has a uh, it's a specification uh, the first Bluetooth specification was released in 1999 and the first consumer Bluetooth device was a hands-free handset headset and uh, the first mobile device to be launched in market was Sony Ericsson T36 which uh, included the Bluetooth but uh, later on it was revised and a new model was a T39 which uh, had all the features uh, of Bluetooth uh, and it was released in 2001 so basically the Bluetooth is a standard set of rules or protocols uh, which are used in the communication in the wireless communication why we need this standard because uh, at that time many companies were making their own wireless devices so they were making uh, uh, other protocols for the communication so it was not very uh, developer friendly because every time uh, they had to develop uh, some software for that protocol they have to uh, learn that protocol and uh, then they have to implement it over different hardwares so a standard was needed uh, because if there if there is no standard then for every company a different set of hardware and software would be required to make a communication uh, possible which was not uh, economical from the developers perspective so at that time the Bluetooth uh, really came in handy because uh, uh, it was a standard set of rules so developers uh, knew that uh, if they are going to implement these standards uh, then they can create uh, their softwares according to same standards and they don't have to go through this uh, learning uh, curve again and again in 2010 Bluetooth 4.0 was released and in 2013 4.1 was released and uh, which uh, included the concurrent central and peripheral uh, this is basically uh, the central is the master device and the peripheral is the slave device and the concurrent uh, uh, is basically uh, 
the device can support both roles. We will see the roles of Bluetooth uh, in uh, uh, upcoming slides. In 2014, 4.2 was released, which uh, had LD secure connections, uh, updated some security stuff in the uh, protocol, and the uh, data length extension. In the future tutorials, we will cover this. In Bluetooth 5.0, which is the main topic, the Bluetooth 5.0 is re was released in 2016, and uh, it provided two megabytes, uh, megabits uh, per second. L it had a long-range advertising extension, and uh, transmission power was uh, increased, uh, like from 10 to 20 dB. In NRF 52840, we can easily implement this feature for long-range communication. In 2017, Bluetooth Mesh Profile was also released and uh, we will cover Mesh in the later tutorials. First of all, we are just going to cover the basic uh, central and peripheral communications. And in, 2009, in 19, 2019, Bluetooth 5.1 was released and uh, there was a special feature in this which is uh, direction finding. Uh, direction finding is basically we can use uh, this feature to find the direction in indoors. It is a, a great uh, addition in Bluetooth. I will see in the future. I'm considering this uh, for the future tutorials as well. The direction finding. Uh, and uh, in 2020, Bluetooth 5.2 was released. Uh, this is this is a recent release and. Uh, it has a uh, lot lots of uh, promising features like isochronous channel ali power control enhanced attribute protocol we will see this uh, this stuff uh, our main uh, concern is the isochronous channels because uh, we can use this with le audio which is coming soon some companies have already uh, made some stuff uh, related to le audio uh, i will put the links in the description of this video for now let's move to the bluetooth basics so ble is basically bluetooth low energy and let's see its features uh, ble stands for bluetooth low energy it was added in bluetooth specification 4.0 uh, with increasing demands of low energy portable devices, uh, Bluetooth evolved to adopt for new demands because uh, nowadays uh, energy saving is uh, more of a concern for engineers because uh, uh, mostly we are using uh, Bluetooth with uh, many portable devices like uh, heart rate sensors and uh, other stuff. So we need uh, some low power devices. BLE is an ultra low power protocol which uses less time on air. Uh, we will see this how it's using less time on, on air by using uh, some basic techniques and uh, allows the device to sleep for longer time periods uh, while the connection is not being used. In programming, I will cover these features. Uh, BLE devices can consume very less energy. As uh, mentioned uh, previously, it uses uh, less time on air, so it consumes very less power and they can work with a single coin battery for up to a year. Uh, it uses a AES-128 encryption. A long transmission data can be achieved uh, and uh, we will cover that as well when we are uh, working with NRF-52840. We can also use uh, uh, some other ICs with uh, NRF-52832 to increase its uh, data uh, transmission distance as well. And uh, instant connection with devices. These are the basic features of BLE where uh, we use these BLE features, where we use this and uh, what are the applications. Uh, basically in the medical we see the blood glucose meter, heart rate monitors and thermometers etc. In fitness and sport we use uh, thermometers, pedometers, altimeters and uh, fitness belt. In computer and games uh, we use uh, mouse, keyboard, game controllers and many more and in adver advertisement we use beacons uh, in iot we use uh, light controlling uh, with our mobile devices we can control the lights uh, window curtains and uh, environment temperature control etc we can use it in many iot applications many custom applications are also used for special purposes and anything that we can possibly imagine with the Bluetooth. So let's see the basic uh, protocol specifications. Uh, I will attach the link for that as well so you can download that uh, Bluetooth 5.0 specifications and check out uh, for the further information. I will just cover the basics uh, because uh, I want uh, you to directly step into the Bluetooth world uh, by doing the programming. Let's uh, cover the basic uh, specifications. Uh, 
uh, we will just cover the general specifications uh, very quickly if uh, all of this information is uh, too much uh, to grasp at first time it's uh, okay because uh, I already told that we are going to do it in three steps so don't worry there are four roles in uh, BLE so the basic uh, roles are broadcaster observer central and peripheral so the broadcaster is a device which advertises data only and cannot bond or connect with other devices uh, whereas the observer is a device which scans for the advertised data and can receive the advertised data but is unable to connect we are using NRF 52832 and NRF 52840 we can put them in these roles as well but more mostly we we don't really use these two roles mostly we use a uh, central and peripheral in uh, microcontrollers we say a master is the device that uh, controls the communication and a slave is the device that uh, connects with the master uh, in Bluetooth uh, language we would say the master is a central device and uh, the slave is a peripheral device so a master device in Bluetooth uh, is a device which scans for advertisement packets and uh, it initiates a uh, connection and is capable of connecting with other peripherals uh, slave devices uh, upon receiving advertisement packets a master device can connect with multiple uh, slave devices at the same time but connecting with uh, more than one slave device would uh, also divide the bandwidth so you have to keep that in mind as well the peripheral on the other hand is a slave device and uh, it uh, advertises its data uh, for the connection uh, with the master so it's gonna advertise like hey I'm here uh, so I'm ready to do the connection so if the central wants to connect with it central is going to send it uh, the request for the connection and uh, they are just gonna connect you need to remember that uh, central is the master device our mobile phones uh, in normal cases are central devices and our devices which are basically uh, the sensors are the peripheral devices and uh, uh, one thing more to mention here is that uh, our, uh, our device like NRF 52832 or NRF 52840 can support multiple roles so it can be a central and peripheral at the same time so we will see that as well and it can also be an observer and broadcaster uh, and peripheral and we can assign as many roles as we want uh, but normally we just have these two roles for central and peripheral now let's see how uh, two devices uh, communicate with each other in a Bluetooth uh, protocol. So first of all you need to know that O here stands for observer so this uh, is going to be the observer. B stands for broadcaster so this is the broadcaster. C stands for central and P stands for peripheral. As you know that broadcaster uh, can broadcast its data, advertises its data but it cannot connect so it's just going to advertise its data whereas the observer is a device that uh, that's going to receive this data so it's just a scanner but it cannot connect with the uh, device. So for example uh, you have uh, some basic data you want to uh, try advertise for example you are a shopkeeper and uh, you have uh, some uh, basic uh, advertisement like hey we have a sale today or some basic so you can uh, use this uh, strategy so you can uh, create a device uh, which is uh, basically a broadcaster and it's just gonna broadcast this uh, advertising data on the advertisement data it's also gonna send uh, some extra information and uh, the observers uh, which in this case uh, would be your mobile phones you can check on your phones uh, the scanned data from the these broadcasters so here is another type of communication I'm not gonna go uh, in the details but I will just cover the basics so here is a peripheral which is a slave and uh, it's also a broadcaster because it's also advertising its data and here is a central device and the uh, central device is basically the master device and uh, in our communication uh, it can be our NRF52832 or it can be a mobile device it depends uh, how we are doing this uh, Bluetooth communication so the peripheral device is going to advertise its data and the central device is going to scan that then it's going to send a request uh, and after that it's it's, it has established a communication with this peripheral 
now what happens is there is another device uh, it supports both role it is also a central device as well as a peripheral at the same time so its peripheral part is going to advertise and connect uh, with this central device and its uh, central part can also scan for the other devices for example in this case another slave device appears and it wants to connect with this device so here it's working as a central device now and this is a slave device or peripheral and it's going to advertise its data it's going to scan its data and then it's going to establish a connection after the request of connection basically uh, if you know if you are a web developer you might know the client server model so in a client server model uh, we can see that uh, uh, server transmits the data and the client is uh, receiving this data and vice versa and uh, uh, in this uh, model we can consider our slave device uh, as a server and our central device as the client device so here in the client server model uh, this uh, central device will be the client and uh, the peripheral device will be the server so if a uh, peripheral is connected with some sensors for example a temperature sensor it's going to send its uh, sensor values to the server and now the, it's up to client so if client requests uh, the, this data if client wants to receive this data then the server is going to transmit its data to the client so you can also consider this because uh, uh, this is the basic uh, communication method uh, that's being used behind the scenes so here is the basic architecture of bluetooth here you can see many layers the first one is a physical layer then we have link layer then host controller interface which is hci then we have logical link controller and adoption protocol l2 cap and then we have attribute and then we have get generic attributes and then we have gap generic access profile and then we have smp which is the security manager protocol so and there is our profile in in our profile is a basic application of the bluetooth so at first uh, it's going to be a little daunting to see everything like it's a big layer uh, but if you uh, divide these layers into three parts then it and uh, it's going to be easier for you to understand basically all of our application is working on this part so uh, this is all implemented uh, so we are just going to use uh, some basic uh, APIs to communicate with that we will implement our profiles according uh, to the specifications of Bluetooth for the beginners I will just explain these uh, uh, one by one and I will go through them very shortly and uh, I will not go into the technical details uh, so that it's not confusing and uh, I want it to remain easy for you to understand so the first one is the controller here has uh, three layers the first layer is a uh, PHY which is the physical layer so let's see what's happening in the physical layer the physical layer is uh, basically implementing the GFSK which is Gaussian frequency shift kink and uh, here you can see we have uh, 2.4 gigahertz ism frequency band ism is the industrial scientific and medical uh, frequency band and it's uh, unlicensed so you can use it so bluetooth is you basically using this uh, frequency band so uh, in most of the countries uh, there is uh, no restriction on this band so it uses 2.4000 gigahertz to 2.4835 gigahertz and uh, each channel there are total 40 RF channels and uh, each channel is uh, 2 megahertz apart from the other channel so for example the first channel is 2404 the second channel is going to be 2406 now you might be thinking uh, what about this 37 38 and 39 basically uh, these uh, there are 40 channels in total and out of these 40 channels there are three channels which are uh, fixed for advertising for broadcasting data and all the other 30 ch 37 channels are basically used for the communication purposes for example transmitting data receiving data these three channels are basically uh, being used for the advertisement so the first is a 2402 the second is 2426 and third one is 2480 
so these three channels are basically used for advertisement and all the other channels are used uh, for uh, the data communication and the data transmission rate can be set uh, to 1 mbps or 2 mbps depending on your communication needs if you if you don't uh, need uh, high speed or higher data transmission rate then 1 mbps is uh, great because it's also going to save a lot of energy for you so in the controller the next layer is the link layer and in link layer uh, you can see it's uh, responsible for advertising scanning establishing and maintaining connections it also makes sure the data packets are arranged in correct order and are transmitted cor uh, correctly there are basically five states in the link layer uh, state machine diagram here you can see these are the five states so initially when we are uh, turning on our device uh, which might be our microcontroller uh, in our case NRF52832 or NRF52840 it's initially in the standby mode uh, then it uh, receives a command from uh, the host and it goes into any of these states for example our device is a peripheral and uh, it wants to start advertising so initially it's in standby state and then uh, it receives a command to start advertising then it goes into the advertising state and in the advertising state if uh, some device uh, like some master device is uh, wants to communicate with it it's going to send it the connection request then it goes into the connection state after the disconnection uh, the device goes back into the standby state and uh, similarly if the device is a master or a central device it's uh, it uh, it receives a command from the host to go into the scanning state if it has scanned for some devices and it's ready to communicate then it can send uh, the initiate initiating request and after the initiation after the initiation the connection can be established and when the connection is lost it goes back to standby state so the standby state uh, uh, is the first state and uh, from that state the device can go into the any other states and uh, there are three broadcasting channel which are approximately 24 megahertz apart so they have less interference also three channels are enough if we use more channels the more time it takes to advertise the data and hence it increases the energy consumption and resources the host provides a standardized interface between uh, host layer and the upper layer and uh, which can be interfaced by programming programs APIs or user hardware like UART etc. The controller passes HCI send data and events to the host. The host passes HCI send commands and data to the controller. The next uh, layer is L2CAP which is logic link control and adoption protocol. Uh, L2CAP layer provides the data encapsulation services to the upper layer and allows end-to-end -end data communication. It also provides connection-oriented and connectionless data services and it can also re reorganize the data if required and it's also responsible for flow control and retransmission. So next is the security manager. Next layer is the security manager. This provides the pairing and key distribution for securing the communication. We will see that in the program in the future tutorials when we will cover the security then we will cover in this in detail. The attribute protocol is the base and uh, it specifies how to access data using a client server model as we have discussed earlier and uh, the data is stored in attributes which can be accessed by clients. Attribute is composed of three basic elements which is a 16-bit handle, a UUID and the value of a certain length. UUID is basically the universally unique identifier. Next is uh, GAT, which is generic attributes. We will see this in detail in the later tutorials. So for now, we are just going to discuss the layers, what, what is their basic role. The GAT is the base uh, profile for all top level LE profiles. So it defines uh, all these attributes are grouped together into meaningful services and it uh, uses the client server architecture so it has a uh, basically it has two roles one is the server and the other is a client the server is going to send uh, the data upon the request of the client the client uh, would be our uh, mobile device or some central device 
or this role can be reversed as well and the next one is GAV which is generic access profile it is responsible for handling device access methods and uh, processes including device discovery connection establishment and connection termination and bonding as well so we will see that uh, in the upcoming tutorials as well uh, for the profile here let's go back and so the next one is the profile and the profile has uh, there are some standardized profiles here and uh, we will see that so let's go so profile basically describes uh, how the devices uh, two devices can discover each other in a bluetooth communication and uh, the profile also uh, describes the overall functionality of the device uh, our profile can have multiple services as well so what is a service a service is basically a collection of device characteristics and behaviors the uh, service uh, we can consider the service as a, a folder and the characteristics are can be considered as the files with data so basically this is the basic analogy behind the uh, how uh, be behind this and uh, maybe it's easier to understand than these uh, profile service and characteristics uh, for the uh, beginners so uh, services are uh, further divided into two categories uh, the first category is the services that are defined by SIG which is the special interest group uh, and these are the standardized services for example we have heart rate and then blood pressure or uh, battery service or so on we have many of these uh, standardized services that are defined by SIG and we will see them and the second category of services are the custom services uh, one thing to mention here is that uh, the standardized services use a UUID uh, for uh, use a 16-bit UUID whereas uh, the custom services uh, use uh, a 128-bit UUID for every service uh, we have to transmit the UUID and which is a uh, 128 bit long so it's going to be a lot of extra bytes every time we are transmitting some data so sig has defined uh, some standardized services and for these standardized services we are just using 16 bit of data uh, for each service uh, so it has a 16 bit of uuid next thing is characteristic the characteristics are the numerical numerical values uh, the characteristics are basically the numeric values and our actual data that user uh, can access and use for different purposes for example temperature value battery percentage etc so all the actual uh, functionality is performed in characteristics and uh, UUID is the universally unique identifier as uh, I told earlier as I have explained earlier and uh, each is service or characteristic is an attribute and all the attributes attributes have a unique UUID so we have to keep that in mind as well to understand uh, the application layer just uh, consider the basic analogy uh, profile are the drawers and uh, the service are the folders and the characteristics are the files and the files contains the data basically so the characteristic will contain the data the service these are the wrappers around this uh, to uh, standardize everything so let's see the structure of uh, a profile so this is the basic structure of a profile for now don't look here just watch this this is the basic uh, structure of a profile in a profile you see we have a service and uh, here is a service declaration basically we we uh, declare the uuid if it's a uh, standardized service or if it's a custom service we have to uh, then assign it a UUID which is 128 bit long we can also include other services and then uh, we have uh, the characteristics and each characteristic have a UUID as mentioned before and then a value for example if it's a battery uh, sir, battery characteristic then it's going to give a battery value and uh, here are the properties and descriptors uh, we will see that uh, in the next slide what are these then we can also include more characteristics uh, a service can have one or more characteristics and their values etc so this is the basic structure now let's see our uh, heart rate profile as a standard profile 
so here you can see in uh, heart rate profile there are two services the first service is the heart rate and the second service here is the device information and uh, the heart rate has a 0x180d uh, as a, it's a UUID and it has a characteristic uh, the first characteristic is a heart rate measurement it has a UUID and here would be its value and then there are these uh, there are descriptors CCCD means a client characteristic configuration descriptor and uh, here uh, we can change its value we will see that uh, in a short uh, in the next slide and uh, of course it also has another uh, characteristic which is a body sensor location and it also has its value and here it's its uh, descriptors then we have uh, another service it's a UUID and then it has some characteristics so this is basically a basic profile after all of this uh, you might be considering how this communication works and uh, how the data is transmitted let's consider a simple example two, blue devi two Bluetooth devices uh, they want to communicate and send data so let's consider the first device to be the central device uh, and uh, in client server model this uh, will be the client the second uh, device will be our uh, sensor device which is uh, NRF52832 or NRF52840 which in this case is the slave device or the server and it's going to read the sensor values and update them over Bluetooth communication so how a server updates uh, data over Bluetooth or transmits the data so according to BLE standard there are two ways to transmit the data from server to client and uh, these are notifications and indications so what are notifications and indications so let's see notifications are a fast way to transmit data they transmit uh, without acknowledgement signal from the client so for example if you're transmitting some heart rate and uh, you don't want uh, the acknowledgement uh, from the mobile device then uh, you can use the uh, notifications the other way is the indication indication uh, has uh, an acknowledgement signal so because of acknowledgement signal uh, we cannot send uh, more than one uh, indications because uh, after every uh, indication we need uh, an acknowledgement signal after uh, the signal is received then we can send uh, another indication and at the start of uh, communication notification and indications are disabled so the device the client has to enable them so in this case our mobile device has to enable uh, them uh, before it can start receiving the heart rate values so here is the example and uh, here central will be our master device and uh, the peripheral uh, is uh, the slave device which uh, would be NRF52832 or NRF52840 so what's going to happen is initially the notifications are disabled uh, and uh, there is no data transmission so later uh, the central or the client is going to enable by writing uh, client characteristic configuration descriptor of uh, this characteristic for the heart rate measurement and now uh, it has enabled notifications so now uh, the slave can transmit the data so now it, it's going to receive this data and uh, once it disables this by writing to CCCD of a heart rate uh, characteristic then uh, uh, the values or uh, the transmission of the values will be stopped uh, so there will be no updates on the client side so the, the, this way the client can control uh, the data from the slave device so let's see some more stuff about advertisements there are four types of advertisements and the first one is directed advertisement and this type of advertisement is suitable for non peer devices as uh, uh, for example if you have already connected with some device uh, then uh, directed advertisement is uh, better scanner devices will respond to it and accept the connection the second one is undirected advertisement and uh, this is a general general advertisement and mostly our devices use this non-connectable uh, advertisement is the basic uh, broadcaster so the data is advertised but uh, uh, the devices ca cannot uh, send the connection requests 
and uh, discoverable advertisement is a type of advertisement in which the device uh, uh, responds to scans but it does not allow the connections so after this uh, all of uh, the information about advertisement and the connections uh, you would you might be wondering how the devices scan and uh, receive these advertisements uh, how the de master device knows that uh, some device is uh, advertising there are some scan events in the ma master device so there are some scan events in the central device and uh, the device turns on its uh, receiver on each scan scan event and uh, starts listening to the advertising device it has two parameters a scan window and the scan window is basically the time period for one scan and the time interval uh, is the inter interval between each uh, scan so basically uh, it's going to scan uh, for a short period of time uh, and uh, after this time it's gonna scan again so that's uh, basics of uh, scanning and uh, how is a connection maintained between two devices uh, for a connection after the connection is established uh, we set uh, some connection parameters these parameters will also affect the power consumption as well because uh, the slave device is going to sleep for less time we can set the connection time interval between 7.5 milliseconds to 4 seconds uh, data transfers are also done in this event so shorter interval time means faster throughput and more power consumption and uh, there is also a uh, slave delay this refers to a specific number of times the slave can skip the connection event so it might be one time or two times we can uh, set this in the programming as well and uh, then there is a supervision timeout so it refers to the time interval between two suc successful connection events if uh, the slave device does not respond within this uh, time then the connection is lost and the device comes and comes back to an unconnected state and it can uh, it can be between 100 milliseconds to 32 seconds depending on your needs so there is also pairing and bonding so what's the difference between them the pairing is basically the authenticating of uh, another device by establishing temporary shared keys which can be used to encrypt links uh, this is the basic pairing and uh, if uh, two devices are bonding uh, then uh, after pairing they will distribute uh, some keys which can encrypt the links for the future reconnections Ali secure connections pairing methods so there are four basic uh, methods and uh, they are just works passkey entry numeric comparison and OOB which is out of band so these are the four basic uh, pairing methods and in, in these methods we just use a, a, a basic key and uh, using some IOS capabilities of the devices and uh, then two devices can communicate with each other numeric comparison is also uh, similar but in both devices we have to confirm this and uh, in OOB out of band we basically use uh, NFC uh, or some other means to uh, do the pairing let's see the Bluetooth transmission rates so previously in Bluetooth 4.0 uh, the data transmission rate was 1, point, uh, uh, 1 megabits per second and uh, the payload was 27 byte uh, in uh, Bluetooth 4.2 the data length extension feature was added and uh, 251 byte payload has also increased the communication speed uh, and here you can see the throughput it's uh, 803 kilobits per second and then in Bluetooth 5 uh, we have uh, 2 Mbps so uh, it's uh, very high as compared to the previous versions we can see here 1434 kilobits per second can be reached this feature was added in the Bluetooth 5 and uh, it uses 1 mega samples per second uh, standard and uh, the maximum data transmission rate is 125 kilobits uh, per second uh, of course uh, uh, the range is uh, extended by 400 percent uh, but uh, uh, we also see that uh, uh, the speed is drastically reduced to 100, 125 kilobits per second but it can be used for long range we can use this feature in NRF 52840 this is a, a relatively new feature direction finding 
uh, and it was introduced in Bluetooth 5.1 and uh, it basically uses multiple antennas to find the direction uh, by calculating the AOA which is angle of arrival and the AOD which is the angle of departure. I will design these uh, devices uh, with uh, these uh, multiple antennas and uh, maybe we will have uh, the future tutorials on this as well. The find uh, direction finding feature. It's uh, really useful for indoor uh, navigation many people are interested in this so in the future I will cover this topic as well Ali audio is the most interesting feature of Bluetooth 5.2 and it's a relatively new and uh, recent feature introduced in BLE specification 5.2 it uses isochronous channels to transmit audio and uh, it has uh, improved the efficiency the new codec is LC3 so it's a uh, uh, really great uh, and uh, it's a really great feature it can also support uh, uh, broadcast to multiple devices so basically it uses these isochronous channels uh, so uh, one single device uh, can broadcast the audio to multiple device at the same time so uh, multiple devices can communicate uh, uh, with these isochronous channels and uh, can receive uh, these audios basic uh, introduction and uh, uh, I have uh, just uh, covered the basics uh, I, I know it's going to be too much for the beginners uh, there's a lot of stuff that I have discussed so uh, for now just uh, keep in mind uh, uh, the basics of uh, characteristics and services advertisements and uh, basics only we will cover them one by one uh, in the upcoming future tutorials I will divide everything uh, down to their programming part so that uh, it's easier for you to understand I hope so you have learned something new today please be sure to subscribe to my channel and if you like my work please uh, do support me uh, the PayPal link is on the description of this video thank you very much for watching see you in the next video